Yep. In case you don't play with your, uh, let's say, bullpup mark or the P90 uh, edition, and you need to strip off the, let's say, the unattachments like the pistol grip or the, the P90 grip. Same goes for if you need to, uh, or maybe only, but if you need to also remove the P90 uh, attachments, you can slide them off. This thing you can technically leave on. It's better to leave it in place. Since when you remove the, the shroud, and let's say the barrel, you don't really save any more space by removing that uh, the trader bar uh, trigger conversion kit anyway. So it's the same length. You could say, but it's really small. Uh, remove the buttstock, of course, but it's just sliding off with the help of losing the, screw, uh, the three screws in the back. But what I do recommend is that you maybe put them, uh, um, something around, like a ribbon or an elastic around the shroud, so this bar is not going anywhere, so it's not like in your back something is trying to get in between the shroud and let's say the metal bar and try to uh, bend it or put a lot of stress on this part so it's kind of nice one tight packet a package and don't have to worry about uh, any damage that's something i would recommend uh, that you do but if you want to and if you need to sh make it this small to put it in your backpack, things like that. Now we are at it. I will also show you uh, how to assemble this uh, trigger conversion for bulb up uh, in the first place. Also, in the case something happens with your trigger bar that it doesn't really want to uh, activate the trigger and you want to keep on playing in the game, sure, this is not like um, ideal, but you can still use the trigger by putting your finger around this bar if you pull this one back you can fire so if there is, uh, is something going on with the front for some reason or with this mount maybe it's go start to slip you don't have any grip on it anymore you can still technically move your hands from here to here and still continue to play like this. Of course, this is not ideal, but it still makes you uh, still able to play. Then you would think like, is it not accidentally to, to uh, bump against with your arm or things like that? Well, I've made it all in the same height. So it's not like this one is sticking more out than this. So from the front, of course, if you would touch the front thing you would fire but if you would uh, if it's something like from the back on from below there's a little plastic here that kind of prevents you from pushing against it and if you push it on the back it will just reset to help to reset the trigger and it's kind of yeah it press against that bar this thing now it's loose of course but then it's attached to the trigger you know it, it, it's possible to that you kind of mess around and you accidentally fire this by touching it like this therefore it, it's not totally ideal but at the same time um, it was kind of sturdy relatively simple to make and um, you will see there is a lot of complaints, you can always uh, put a shield around it but then it will get even more bigger and the thing is now if there is some sand and dust of course it can uh, get in there now but it's also it's more easy to kind of work it out this way because it's exposed if I would put a place a shield around it that you could not bump against it then yeah it would get bigger and at the same time if it would get sand inside of there now there is no really even way to work it out you cannot expose then you need to really disassemble it to 
So that's kind of the reason why I did this. But yeah, keep in mind, this possible a possibility if you release the magazine and put your finger like this or something, then you will lose fire. So you need to be kind of careful what you're doing there with your hand, but at the same time it's not really... We are using the magazine thing right here, why would you put your finger like this, you know? It's kind of keeping aware of what you are doing. Um, for the play test that we have done at the moment, it's not really... You put your arm like this, so there's not really that much of a time that you do things like this and, and this. It's kind of a strange angle if you do that. But I did, I do want to mention to keep in mind that it is a possibility of course. The thing about this trigger design uh, is that uh, you can put your hands from the top and activate the safety and uh, the fire position. Also you could do it from below. So it's possible to do it this way. You may end up more risk that you may activate some of the, the components here. So it's probably better to do it like this. Because you can imagine if I hold it like this, you can use your other hand and move it down. Then you can feel the button uh, yeah, right here. Don't have used it that much. But you can feel the pin. Also you can kind of help by just gently feel like, okay, then it should be here. You can feel it. And of course you could also do it with your uh, other arm, but you can see it's kind of a strange angle. So it's probably better to do it with your off, uh, with, not with your trigger hand, but with the other arm. And downwards it's also possible, like mentioned before, and you can also just use a finger and push on both sides put it on fire or not of the jacket like okay it's on fire okay okay let's go but uh, yeah that's it okay in case you want to open it up to uh, do some uh, let's say maintenance or uh, if you'd like to remove uh, the the conversion kit just remove the two screws right here they will be in different sizes but then you can lift up this plate and you can see how it works. So when I push on the trigger bar, it will move uh, some parts around inside. I don't uh, <laughs> going to mention all the names I gave it, but uh, that's basically it. So be careful. The, in this case, black piece. That is an uh, a piece that is uh, sitting in there loose, so if you turn it upside down, it will fall out. Technically, you can leave this, uh, I believe it, I call it a toggle, uh, you can leave that in place with that screw. It's just, uh, it got a special uh, mounting that you, it kind of fits in place like this, and you put a uh, bolt inside to. Uh, to make it stay there. So in this case you can uh, very easily take out any sand, things like that, if you need to do this. So with the installation process, make sure of course that all those parts are very easy to move, that they don't have resistance. And with this bar as well, it needs to be sliding uh, nice and smooth. If it starts to bind to things like that, then you need to do some sanding, things like that. Um, since I was changing some materials, I did need to sand a little bit. But it is just to take out the layer lines. So it's, it's not much. But it's just that an... Uh, when it fell, it just make it a little bit more smooth. Of course this is a good moment to tap in the metal rod as well. Um, there are some holes as you can see at the top to uh, use some bolts to, uh, to clamp it. But in both cases with the prototype and this one 
it has uh, a really tight fit on the rod. Of course, your yeah, your metal rod can be a different size with tolerances. Um, so you may need to clamp it, but in my case, just stepping it in with a hammer gently, uh, it's enough. Of course, when you do this, um, of course, when you do this, make sure that the metal rod is. Uh, having the correct length with your front trigger so it's not too long not too uh, too far back because that's kind of the place where you need to adjust it with this back part and uh, when that is done uh, in this case it's a nice solid piece so it goes nowhere so when you remove the screw then you can lift this small piece up and take it apart then the other part will fall out on the other side as you can see they got you can see it here they got some special shapes there that's just to make sure that when you fit them together you can only do it one place and they got um, a good uh, grip on each other and the screws only to hold them together and of course when you have this plate just put it in there and put the others one on the other side and put the screw through it and that's all you need to do it's really simple so when this piece got the correct length with the bar the metal bar then uh, and you have made sure that all the parts are moving smoothly then you can proceed to really install the, the pieces together as you can see I used a metal uh, brass insert for the threads here so it's more friendly to take it apart every, uh, every time um, it was also because the, thread, the hole was a little bit too big for the ball to grip uh, I should have uh, adjusted that one for you guys but uh, in case you really want to have a brass insert in there just drill it a little bit bigger so you can put the brass insert in there with the melting process first you pick the one with the big hole in the middle you put uh, that piece inside it's, you can only pretty much do it one way then on the other side you place the other piece that wants to sit in there take the bowl, turn it in there so it's uh, one group again, one piece you can uh, place the piece inside of there it will be moving around then take your marker flip it around so it uh, Oh, I almost forgot. Put your finger on it so uh, the parts don't fall out. Take uh, the metal rod piece, just slide it in. Because later you cannot slide it on when it's on the marker. So just put your fingers on the slides and on the other side as well, the parts, so it stays in. Flip your marker. Make sure that let's say the black piece and things like that are in the front not in the back otherwise it will touch the trigger and don't want to get in but it's pretty easy still keep uh, in this stage it doesn't really matter where you place your fingers on the back because it cannot fall out anymore but uh, now it's a matter to place the small screw in the front and the other one that one will just give uh, the, the one that's doing this motion kind of some extra support so it doesn't bind the idea is not that it really grips on that one so it's nice and loose but it's just some extra support of course the, the smaller bolts will actually hold the two uh, pieces of the assembly uh, together 
And that's nice with the metal in switch, you can kind of turn it nice and don't have to worry that you destroy the threads in the plastic. But at this stage, the trigger bar cannot fall out anymore because of the, how the Macwell is designed, it's bigger, so it cannot go past that. So that's why you need to make sure that you attach this piece before you do uh, attach the two plates again. But at this stage, uh, it's a uh, working assembly again. It's pretty simple. And now, of course, it's up to you if you use, uh, and that depends kind of on what the, the size uh, metal rod you use. If you use the pistol grip, or you go for the P90 uh, assembly. 